Tom, let's jump into it here. Is 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 now Cooper Cup uh, off of uh, or was he ever on a trade block or or, or is now uh, Leslie Les Snead going to have uh, blocked calls for him? Tom, what do we have? <laughs> I mean, last night figured as a really big game. If the Rams lose, if maybe there's a flag thrown for a face mask, if the Vikings drive for a touchdown, maybe we're in a little bit different spot. I think that you you saw what the Rams thought that they had coming into the season, which was if they have Cup on the field, if they have Puka on the field, and obviously Matthew Stafford, they still can create a, a lot of mismatches, and they've got a, a really efficient type of an offense. Uh, and you witnessed that last night, despite extraordinarily, maybe unprecedented, limited practice for Puka Nakua. And then obviously Cooper Cup coming off of a uh, five, six week layoff himself. Uh, here's what I would tell you on the trade front. The Rams had been engaged in trade calls in really over the past couple of weeks here. Certainly, it had gotten to the point of other teams being aware of what the potential compensation would be in a trade. The Rams wanting something in the neighborhood of a second round pick, maybe a little bit more for Cooper Cup. That's above the price level that we're seeing with a lot of these other trades because Devontae Adams was basically a third round pick. Amari Cooper was a little bit less all told than a third round pick. DeAndre Hopkins was a fifth. That's that's kind of the bandwidth you normally see with these trades when you're talking about in the season. Um, you know, the last guy I think that got traded for a second round pick was Chase Claypool, which is an entirely other conversation. Mm. But Cooper Cup's, you know, 31 years old and he's been hurt three years in a row. It's hard to sit there as, as another team and say, we're going to give up a second round pick and maybe more for the guy. So it never advanced to the point of, this is about to get done, but certainly, you know, they had those trade conversations. You watch it last night, you look at the state of the NFC West and you, you kind of get that sense. I'm sure Sean McVay had it of like, why can't we make a run? They, they may need to add, you know, they're in, and this is part of the one function of the later trade deadlines. This is the first year that has been pushed back even another week. And you have teams like the Rams who might have thought were out of it. And all of a sudden now you're going, do we need to be buyers instead? That's that's why the advisory committee had advocated for either a week, if not two additional weeks to the trade deadline, which was just get more information about what type of team you are so you can decide which side of the fence you're on. Flip side of that, the reason the competition committee always had pumped the brakes on putting a later trade deadline is you don't want teams to really know they're bad and go total fire sale and impact competitive balance and impact the matchups that happen the back half of the year. But to the extent that everybody loves trades, we've had a half dozen of them so far. I would fairly guess if I had to put it over under on, we'll probably have a half dozen more over these next uh, couple of weeks here. It's entertaining, and you're going to continue to get action as teams kind of try to figure out which side of this they're on. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.